Hey, so welcome back. We've been talking through some FRQs in preparation for the AP Physics C Mechanics AP test. And so this is an example FRQ that was given out as a good example in preparation for the 2020 test. The College Board highlighted this FRQ and said, hey, here's one of the two that you should take a look at. So definitely this is one that we should take a look at. And that would lead to a higher chance that you will get a problem like this where you have to design an experiment on the fly and hit some certain requirements to get points. So it's going to be definitely worthwhile to take a close look at this FRQ. So let's go ahead and get to it. It says you are to perform an experiment. It's a conservation of energy going from gravitational to translational kinetic energy. And you're given some equipment down below here. And it's asking you what pieces of equipment are you going to use. So start thinking about, all right, if we're going to do a conservation of energy where you go from gravitational into kinetic energy, how could I set this up as an experiment? It turns out that there are probably going to be two ways, one of two ways that you would set this up. And what I would recommend is you should probably check off the meter stick and the stopwatch first and then do your procedure your diagram come back and put a check mark by anything else that you do come up with later so they're asking you for this question initially to get you to think about it but i think you should partially complete it now do the rest of the problem come back and complete the rest after you decide exactly what you're going to do for your procedure all right and so part b says outline a procedure for performing the experiment include a diagram label the equipment include a description of the measurements you would make and a symbol for each measurement all right so here is our grading key for this there are four points we can get for this and there are really two major setups that you would probably go with in this problem there are probably some strange ones that have been thrown out there that may have gotten full credit as well but for the most part you would have one of two types of setups so one setup would be a pulley system with a cart and a mass attached by a string over a pulley like you see right here where you're measuring this height value, this height value because this has to fall down a certain height. This is already up at a certain height. We'll talk about those calculations in a moment. This D value right here, the distance that this cart is going to move. Let's take a look at the point values here. So it says for a procedure that indicates the height needed to calculate gravitational potential energy, indicates distance and time measurements to calculate velocity diagram and clear indication of the height measurement diagram clear indication of distance measurement so distance is important here in this diagram here and that does feed into where they are taking this this isn't purely a conservation of energy problem even though it is set up that way and it seems to be that way and they kind of tell you it is it actually uses some kinematics as well and that's why they're stressing this d value right here this distance that it moves, which leads to some problems in my opinion. But let's go ahead and talk through this. So a procedure, you could write something like this. A cart is attached to a mass over a pulley through a string and the distance that the cart moves is measured, the height is measured here and so on, just as we mentioned before. And time, the time that it takes for the mass of the weight to fall down is measured. And that would get you your four points here, essentially. So that would be one way you could set this up. Another way you could set this up would be is if you had a ramp system. And actually, this is going to be easier than if you had the pulley system. So there's less things to measure, essentially. You can measure the time. You can measure this distance down the ramp, the height of the ramp right here. And you can write about that with your procedures. So you could say a card is set at the top of a ramp. The distance down the ramp is measured, the mass of the ramp is measured, the height of the ramp is measured, and the time for the cart to go down the ramp is measured. And those things are used to calculate like your final speed at the bottom of the ramp, something along those lines. That would get you your points for this problem right here. All right, and so let's take a look at C. So it says, give a detailed account of the calculations of gravitational potential energy and translational kinetic energy, both before and after the transformation in terms of the quantities measured in Part B. So for this one right here, if we're doing the pulley system version of this, we could have our setup right here, four points for this. So there are a lot of points right here. So for your initial potential energy of the system, we would have your potential energy for the system is the potential energy of this cart plus the potential energy of this object over here. This should be labeled as a B in my diagram right here to be consistent with this B over here. So essentially, there are two potential energies we need to keep track of initially. That's important. Your final potential energy, we're going to assume this thing goes down and hits the ground. 
We're also assuming the ground is our zero reference line, and so you would end up with this as your final potential energy. Your initial kinetic energy for the entire system is going to be zero. And your final kinetic energy, this is really important. We're thinking this is a system, and these are attached by a string. So you've got one object over here, one object over here, but they are moving in tandem, and so we are treating their masses as if they are one object. This is really important, and if you haven't done a lot of this in the past, it's really important to consider that we're talking about this combined mass right here of the entire system. It's also really important to think about two different height values here because you can't just ignore this potential energy of this over here. It does cancel out later as you work the problem if you work it as a purely conservation of energy problem. Which brings up a good point because we are not supposed to continue to solve this as a purely conservation of energy problem. So there is a red flag here. T and D are unused. So the time that we took with our timer, we're not using that. We're not using that D value. You can solve this as a purely conservation of energy problem. And I think that is where most people would go with this naturally because that's the way we are led to think we should do this. The one red flag though is that we're not using T and D. So if we think, all right, well, let's think about kinematics. And this is where what they are assuming you are doing is that with that red flag of not using T and D, then we transition into kinematics. And I think that's fair. I think that's a fair thing, although that's hard because we have had a huge head fake where this is talking in terms of conservation of energy and so on, but maybe we can transition to kinematics. So if we roll with that, the second issue comes up, and this is a big one in my mind. This issue is this equation that you essentially need to use to be able to finish this out and get these last point right here or two points right here is not on your equation sheet. So this equation right here is like a fourth kinematics equation. It's not on your equation sheet, which I think is a pain. Now you may have this memorized already, but I'm not a big fan of a entire problem having a section that basically hinges on the idea that you have memorized an extra equation. And I don't know back in 2012 if this equation was on the sheet or not. I know in 2020 it's not. However, I will say other than that, it's a pretty decent problem. So if we can get here, if we can transition into kinematics, and then if you can work with this equation, which is a big if, then the rest of the problem becomes easy. And you can say, well, I can solve in terms of these things that we have worked with and talked about in the past. You end up with 2h over t right here. I'm a fan of the College Board. I'm a fan of their problems. I think they have a lot of brilliant problems. I don't think the c part is their best work. Let's put it that way. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other example and how we would reason through that. If you did the other example right here, you would essentially still need these four and then the fifth one as well. These four criteria we'll talk about first, about the kinetic energy, initial and final, and potential energy, initial and final. And this actually is quite easy at this point. These are four really easy points right here. If you take a look at this, there's really only one height that we're dealing with. There's really only one mass that we're dealing with. So this is a way easier system to deal with. You don't have to deal with two masses. You don't have to deal with two heights. So those are four easy points right here. Okay, and if we want to calculate the instantaneous velocity, by the way, that leads me to think of derivatives. We don't have an equation for a velocity that we can take a derivative of, and so we're going to go ahead and work with this instead. But we go ahead, if you can get here, if you can reason through, uh, we need to use time and we need to use the d value. And so because of that, we're going to transition into kinematics. And you say, all right, well, maybe I should transition into kinematics. Secondly, if you're like, well, I know an equation that's not on my equation sheet, that would be much easier to use. I'm going to go ahead and use that. Okay, so if you can do that, then you can get here and you can continue with the problem. And then the rest of it is easy if you can get here. And if you can't, no worries. Honestly, you can still get a five missing points along the way. So just do the best you can and get as many points as you can along the way. Let's do the rest of the problem. And so notice that this version of our answer right here is the more or less the same thing as what we had come up with previously for the different setup. So depending on whatever setup you had, you should get comparable answers. All right, so D says, after your first trial, your calculations show that the energy increased during the experiment. Assuming you made no mathematical errors, give a reasonable explanation for this result. 
All right, well, it's not reasonable to have an increased amount of energy in the system if there are no major outside forces acting on the system. So the question becomes, well, then why do we have increased energy? And it must be an error. So a reasonable explanation for something like this would be a little push was given to the cart as it was released, something along those lines, because it's not going to magically gain energy from the universe or something like that. It, that doesn't happen. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. And so it's not going to be gaining energy during this process. And E is a similar idea. So it says, on all other trials, your calculations show that the energy decreased during the experiment. We would expect that because energy is going to be leaving the system from a non-conservative force. Assuming you made no mathematical errors, give a reasonable explanation for the fact that the average energy you determined decreased. Include references to conservative and non-conservative forces as appropriate. Whenever you see non-conservative forces, I want you to think friction. Just think friction because for our purposes, that's what we're talking about. In other words, the total amount of energy is not conserved if friction is significant. So you have a certain amount of energy and some of that energy is converted from potential into kinetic as the thing slides down or moves across the table. But some of that energy is lost, right? And that's what we mean with a non-conservative force. And so... That's what you would explain, and that's what we would expect, is that there would be some loss of energy during the course of the experiment. That loss of energy is the energy lost to the environment, mostly as friction. Could be a little bit of heat as well, but basically it's going to be friction. So I hope this has been helpful. Hopefully you can come up with an experimental setup for the day of the test, assuming you have something like this. You may have something like this. I would say there's a decent chance that you will get something like this, especially since the College Board has highlighted this as a good example to go through and to think about. So hopefully you can rock that test and your confidence is building as you're getting ready for the upcoming AP Physics Mechanics exam.